Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you on this Sunday morning. Yes, I am sitting up in this hot office. Uh, The building uh, doesn't run the air on Sunday mornings um, because um, there are not that many people who come in on Sundays. I've been petitioning to have uh, the unit run on the 8th floor uh, for at least the a.m. hours and they're trying to work with me on that but imagine uh, putting that much energy and effort into one business I get it but anyway I'm here because the house is full and the three-year-old grandson ain't having it so trying to work out of the home office this morning was not going to be an ideal situation for everything that I needed to get done I'm pretty much done here but I wanted to drop in on you uh, to talk about the latest project, the latest book project. Um, still haven't come up with a final title for the book, but uh, it's about building black generational wealth. Um, I'm leaning towards uh, the Black Wealth Project. Uh, I'm taking uh, suggestions uh, of what you should be, and when you learn about what this book is about, and you can do that by following the link and I'll talk about it a little bit um, here Uh, but those of you who follow me know that on this book this is the 25th book Um, it's monumental to me um, for a number of reasons obviously I have worked diligently over the past 30 plus years to be a part of the solution for the enigmatic issues we face in the black community. I have done everything I can to be uh, a powerful and influential impact in a number of areas that I've spent a lot of time mastering it and understanding. I think that I have done a remarkable job, but my work isn't done yet. But book number 25, again, is monumental, and I am approaching it a little differently. I mentioned um, earlier last week, I mentioned the fact that I'm actually accepting sponsorships uh, for the book. In other words, I'm partnering with my community. And when I say my community, I mean the people who really believe in the work I'm doing, the people who believe that there's work to do in the black community, the people who are willing to be committed to taking steps to advance us as a collective um, to those people. Uh, I am partnering with you and uh, asking you to sponsor the project. There's so much on deck. And this part project is monumental. This isn't just talking about econ- black group economics. This isn't the same old thing. I think Dr. Claude Anderson has nailed that. This isn't just about investing. I think Dr. Boyce Watkins has that nailed down. This is not just about the principles of finance and economics, which we definitely delve into and talk about, uh, connect to. This is about the psychology and sociology. This is about the political uh, impact and how so many things have been put into place to stop the development of black wealth and then how we have been gaslighted into believing that we are still struggling um, on the borderline of poverty as a nation, as a black nation, because we are lazy and lethargic and unpurposed when the true uh, matter is we've been blocked on every turn. Uh, there are so many different codes and, and, and restrictions and, and institutional practices that were at play. Now, this isn't a whining book. This isn't a pointing and whining and blaming book. This is saying let's identify what happened and why we're at where we're at right now so that we can develop solutions, which I talk about, and, and we have to change our mindsets. So it's psychological, it's sociological, it's how we interact with one another, not just in the area of finance and business, but how we interact with one another, how we see one another, how we move with one another, the the, the mindset we take in direct association with our responsibility to collective. Because if we don't see ourselves as a part of the collective collective and have a responsibility to the collective, then we will not take pro-social 
um, actions that benefit the collective. We will only think of ourselves. And this, then you end up with what we have now, an entire bourgeoisie class that thinks they're better than everybody else because they were able to escape or get through the holes in the net. Uh, that's not success for me. That's not black mobility for me. That's not, uh, and I've said this from the beginning, and if you follow me, you know this. I've said, as long as I remain an anomaly, as long as there are far more black men who haven't experienced my success, then I'm a failure because my job is to make sure everybody has the same success and the same opportunities and the same ability to live their lives at the level that they decide they want to live their lives at. And so that's the goal of this book. And so we're going to talk about everything from black codes to convict leasing to redlining to urban renewal to benign neglect, uh, mass incarceration, gentrification, uh, miseducation, uh, and so much more. And how all of those played a role in inhibiting the development of black wealth on a grand scale. Even when we came together and we were trying to practice group, black group economics, there were things in place that disrupted that down to the uh uh, point of massacres. So we need to deal with all of that, but we need to deal with it in a manner saying, okay, this is what we're going to do this time. This is how we're going to approach it this way. And this is what this project is about. And the pro I, I use the term project because the book is just the beginning. I want to, after the book has printed and the book is in circulation, I want to start to exercise the principles on a national level. I want uh, chapters in all cities that can adopt these and build within their own communities while connecting with outside communities, something we haven't had. One of the biggest issues in Tulsa was the fact that while they understood economic science and financial science, they did not understand military science, social science, and political science. They did not create the allies or the connectivities outside of their community that would have brought them certain levels of protection. They didn't know how to leverage their financial prowess to buy political protection, to, put, to buy social protection, which is a part of the allies. There's a reason that Israel is in the middle of multiple nations that absolutely hate them that Israel is surrounded by Arab nations, none of which like Israel and would love nothing more than to wipe Israel off the map. Israel has created at, uh, ally relationships with the United States, with uh, the UK, uh, nations that have the power to strike back at these Arab nations with great force, uh, nations that can send their navy and keep their navies within reach. And th the navies have air air airstrike capacity through through airplanes and long range missiles to do great damage this is uh just a uh, an um idea of what it takes to operate as an entity where there's a great force around you that will love nothing more than to destroy you so we're going to talk about all of that now for a moment of transparency uh, and it's a shame that I have to come here and do this, but I want to do this because there are some people out there that may have genuine questions or may hear or see something and it bother them. For 30 years, despite uh, having full careers in a number of different areas as I progressed along my life, I have been consistent in my love of my people and the fight for my people. I have to this point uh, written and published 24 volumes. I have written and published nearly a thousand academic articles and thousands of prose articles on multiple platforms and multiple places. I have thousands of videos where I've given up myself and made them completely accessible to anybody who wants to watch them. I have brought value in ways unimaginable and where most people wouldn't even see it. I have done it without complaining. I have brought it. I have suffered many strokes um, beginning back in 2015. I had five heart attacks back in 2020, and I still kept coming. I don't know how to quit, and I will not quit. But there are some who wonder why uh, I, I'm asking for sponsorships. Well, uh, it's multifold. First and foremost, um, it helps because I own my publishing company. I'm not like the average. Matter of fact, the average author is struggling. 
so that you understand how things work. Only your best-selling authors are eating off of their books, uh, and some of them not as well as you would think. You know, your James Pattersons and, 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 and of that like, who are on the New York seller's best list, meaning they've sold them at least a minimum of 25,000 copies are eating. because And they're getting uh, the good signing bonuses that allow them to take sabbaticals while they write their books. The average author isn't eating off of their book. If, if they're lucky, they, they've created a platform through which they can do other things based off of the fact that they have a published book. Uh, so that's the first thing. But what I want to make clear is I've done all of this and I've never asked anyone to do anything uh, to help me on it. Uh, I tried it on the first book, actually. Um, I think I got one or two uh, contributions totaling, I think, 75 bucks. And I went on and did it. Um, and I only did that because people were telling me about crowdfunding and, you know, try it, whatever. It didn't work. Um, and I understand that. I, you know, I, I wasn't expecting it. I went on and I did what I did. But because I am the publisher, you, you know, uh, there's no uh, advance coming for me to take a sabbatical. Uh, I'm assuming all the costs of, of the entire process of publishing from graphic design to uh, content editing to formatting to all of that is coming through my company but it's my company so I'm I'm taking up the cost and so I decided hey let's just share some of the load uh, with my community it's going to do two things instead of just saying hey I want you to donate to the organization I'm saying let's partner on this let's do something together be a part of this by sponsoring it and then be forever and indelibly imprinted in it because you're going to be your name is going to be inside of the book as a sponsor and you will get to memorialize or write a statement of appreciation in, in the case of memorialization you get to memorialize any person or persons that you think made a major impact on your life and that you want to show appreciation to and then for those who want to do it for someone that's alive your spouse uh, your child uh, your parent or whoever and they're still alive you can still memorial you can still write a statement of appreciation uh, those who give uh, who sponsor uh, with a sponsorship of 25 or more you're going to receive a copy of the book and the book will actually be priced at more than 20 for this is going to be a 400 plus page book it's going to be priced at more than $25 but you'll get a copy of the book and you'll be able to put your name in and you do your memorialization and that's for anybody it doesn't matter the size of your sponsorship if someone sponsors something for a dollar I'm going to uh, give them the same um, opportunity to put their name in and write a paragraph uh, more memorializing someone or a statement of appreciation and for anyone who uh, actually sponsors something uh, from $100 up, you're going to have a page dedicated. You have a dedicated page, meaning that your uh, memorialization goes on a dedicated page. And um, the idea is just to bring the community in, do something together, and say, hey, look, ride this one with me. I've came 24 times hard, uh, and I brought you my best. Ride this one with me. I don't think that I'm asking for something that's uh, unreasonable, and I'm not demanding it of anyone. For those who don't believe in what I'm doing, or for those who see it, but just say, man, that's not something I'm willing to do. I'll just wait and buy the book. It's all good. For those who are seeing it and say, I'm not going to buy the book, and I'm not going to do it, uh, but I can see it, blah, blah, blah. It's good. For those who look at it and say, man, this is a bunch of crap, it's all good. So what, what I'm saying is I want people to understand that this journey isn't easy this journey isn't for the squeamish this journey isn't for the ones who are here to get paid trust me i could do a whole lot better if i turned my back on my people and just started doing what i do because uh the paying clients who pay what i demand for the most part don't look like me yes i do have some paying clients who look like me and who have bought platinum packages on the different services I offer through the different companies that I run. But 
I'm, I'm good. I can operate in their world because I have the gold. I can bring them what they want for their company, for their marriage, for their business, because I can do that. But it's not just about that for me. It's not just about money. Because if it was just about money, again, this doesn't pay. Trust me. I have YouTube channels that I think I put less things of significance on as far as my heart. Now, obviously other people find value in them that generate way more revenue than this channel. And it is what it is, but I think my impact on this channel has the most significance to me as a man as far as my interaction with the world. Now, the most significance comes from my interaction with my wife and my family. And, you know, again, they need me to be able to handle my business, and I, I do, uh, but I could do a whole lot more if I wasn't committed and unshakable in bringing what I'm, I'm discovering and what I'm learning. And, the, and this is the thing, the more you research and the more you learn, the more frustrated and angry you get and the more uh, dug in you get and intentful on bringing, the, bringing, bringing everything you have to show people exactly what's going on. So I'm saying all that to say um, I love what I'm doing. And if nobody sponsors, we have I think about seven or eight so far. But if nobody else sponsors, the book is still coming. Uh, this isn't me holding the book hostage. This is me saying, hey, be a part of it. Show some love. Uh, let me know that you believe in what I'm doing. Help me get there quicker because the more, the more sponsors I get, the more time I can dedicate to writing and turn down some clients because it has to be done in a time, in time and time is money and and I I I'm filling spaces and but in order to write the book I need to clear spaces it's, it's simple mathematics on that level but it's so much more to me so I hope this clarifies things I hope that this uh makes sense and and, and like again for those who don't believe in it you don't have to give um for those who do whatever you give is appreciated and valued uh, like I said, even a one dollar contribution. And again, nobody's amount's going to be on that because I don't want any type of shaming. Now that'll be categories, um, but the categories will have ranges, so no one will know what amount you gave. And every amount is appreciated because, to me, the time it takes to interact to do that speaks volumes to me. I can find ways to find something to be appreciative and grateful for. Um, it's what I do. It's, it's what I teach my clients. You, if your day doesn't start with gratitude, you're in for a long, hard day. And so I just wanted to take the time to share that with you. I hope that uh, I have opened up and you can see a little bit more. The link for you to go in and actually read and learn more about the sponsorship program is in the description box. Click the link, go there. And if you decide you want to sponsor, just scroll down to the bottom, click the, uh, the button, and from that point, you'll be able to do uh, whatever it is you want to do. You'll be contacted by me uh, where I will personally thank you and then uh, invite you to send me your message that you want in the book. Uh, on that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I, I still have a long day. The wife is out of town, so I got to go, go to the gym. Then from the gym home and make sure the kids eat. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it's her birthday month, and so uh, I'm celebrating her and let her do her thing, and you know we'll connect um, and do our thing for her birthday, which is actually next weekend. We'll collect and do that then. On that note, I'm ready. I'm getting out of here. I hope that I brought some clarity, and we will talk later. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.